There we go. Hey everybody. It's Gregor Otero in Asheville, North Carolina. It's lovely and warm. So, I've been meaning to make this video for a while. I just haven't had the best camera for it. But a nice little Blackberry style 5 megapixel. So, more videos all the time on the road. This is great. And so this video is about electricity and magnetism. Um, some of the primary dimensional forces. Pure energy. How it relates to this reality. How it manifests. And I wanted to explain some basic concepts for people who need wrap their heads around it. And so, many people put electricity or electrical particles before magnetism. And that electrical particles, when they spin, they create a magnetic field. <laughs> to me, there's a little bit more going on um, in that magnetism is the prime mover of electricity. Electricity is a byproduct of magnetism. And so, maybe I should speak up. Hopefully you guys can hear me good enough. Uh, here's uh, some poi. Let's go back up here. Alright. got some poi. And magnetism it's a, it's a magnetic field. It's a flow of energy. And it's usually expansive going outwards, while electricity is very inwards. And if you have uh, a point of existence, say, this sphere, okay? Single point. This is the zero dimension point. Um, singularity can also represent the infinite connection to God, source, whatever you want to call it, okay? So, what happens when you start to spin a singularity, or basically rotate it on its axis? You create centrifugal force on that act, that, on that um, piece of object, and it wants to expand outwards. Here's a, here's a thought experiment to think about in terms of in vortex mathematics, we have a number circle divided into nine parts, um, a linear sequence, one through nine. Well, if you start to spin this number wheel, the number wheel circle itself is zero, it's pure balance. When you spin that singularity, um, imagine that each of the numbers, these nine points, are connected to a spring, okay? We're all together, they look like a single dot, a sphere, um, a point. But when you start to spin it, rotate, these springs want to stretch out um, and, and, and expand. So you have a circle come into existence, which relates to one of the most ancient uh, alchemical symbols, the dot within a circle, relating to the sun, which you say relates also to as above, so below, fractal cosmology. Um, and you keep zooming on that dot, you're going to see another circle within a dot. I mean, even this little camera I look into, it's a dot within a circle. Um, that's how we see reality. And so, when you do that, you start to get centrifugal force, okay? Um, and the expansion begins to come outwards. This is as simple as magnetism gets. I'm creating a magnetic field right now. Um, it's prana, chi. It's, um, it's creation. It's taking the infinite, the void, the silence, and, and adding a little beat to it, a little pulse, a little rhythm. If you want to start dancing, moving. Okay. Magnetism is this expansive force, this radiant masculine energy coming into creation. Right. Now electricity, electricity is a little bit harder for people to understand. But electricity to me relates to a breathing and um, relates more to breath. It causes an expansion and contraction of the magnetic fields. Because the magnetic field is expansion itself, but you can cause a change um, more of a, um, a fluctuation um, of the magnetic field. And so, if you have one magnetic field, like so, right? And this guy, relative to you, is spinning out um, counterclockwise. <laughs> and then we have another magnetic field. We have two magnetic fields spinning counterclockwise, or one clockwise, one counterclockwise. Opposing energies, yin and yang. But, when you start to overlap them, Okay, and this is the vesica Pisces. What you're doing is on the inside, in this overlap area, I have a compression of energy. There's twice as much energy moving in this central shaft than the energy moving on the outside. I have two going up, and one down here, and one down here. So you have a compression of energy on this side, and expansion on the energy on the outside. Okay, it causes a breathing of the energy. To even add, 
These guys have quartz, uh, quartz crystalline, uh, magnetite powder, quartz sand, copper powder, and zinc powder. Um, basically an organite effect. Copper likes to absorb electrons, and zinc will stay positively charged. Um, you'll get the crystals all vibrating. Yeah, these guys are, these are some very alive poi. Um, so, indeed, they're creating magnetic fields. Um, we completely overlap these fields, so. Like so, um, you get something that appears in the vortex map. Okay? This relates to the nexus key. The nexus key, the vortex map, the most important things that Marco has been working on, Marco wrote. And so, here we have a traditional 6x6 six six matrix, or what I consider traditional, it's the simplest of the matrices, relates to the Star of David. Um, where you have two nexus keys in it. So we have a doubling sequence this way, a doubling sequence, um, or having sequence this way, doubling, having, in the two trains. Watch my other videos, I can explain this. Um, also Marco's intro to Vortex Math Max explains this a little more. I go more in depth, specifically also in the 6x6 matrix where um, no one else has been really focusing on. Um, but also if you go vortexspace.org and look under Space for Gregor Arturo, you'll find um, all this information. I have a lot more information on that website that you can read. But this is the horizontal, these doubling and trinity sequences, which we find in first dimensional vortex map. When we lay them together, it creates another axis, a vertical axis, and also a horizontal axis. Um, as I've discovered in the, in the vortex map, dimensions fractalize um, by eight. So the first dimension, uh, a linear sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it goes in one direction. You can go in the other direction, but it's a whole other separate vector. There's only one vector in the first dimension of, of magnetism. But, um, as you get into the second dimension, you have eight vectors now um, in, in relation um, to uh, electricity. And when you fractalize that again, the third dimension, which relates to light, has 64 dimensions, which I strongly believe it interrelates to the I Ching 64. So, if you look here, we have two sequences going down uh, this 6x6. Six six. So this first sequence connects to this sequence, connects to this sequence. So you have three uh, uh, vertical lines that create one circuit, and this creates one circuit. And that circuit because this is 6 by 6, there's 36 numbers in it, so two sequences represent 18 number sequences that Marco Rowan calls the nexus key. And so, that's this laid out right here, and there's three different ways to lay out 6 by 6s, which will give you three different types of nexus keys. Um, this nexus key is counting by one, or two overlapping linear sequences. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it creates this pattern. You get these double twos and double sevens. You can also get nexus keys for counting um, by two and by four, which all have opposites of counting by eight. Counting by one, polar the um, opposite is eight, two, seven, four, five. So like if you look right here, eight, sixteen is seven, uh, twenty-four is six, uh, thirty-two is five, and so on. So this is counting by eight and counting by one. And these sequences are overlaid with each other, all right? So this causes an expansion and contraction of the magnetic field. And so if you have the magnetic field over here, it's not the best drawing, but we got the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on the other direction. So red's going around in a circle and black's going around in a circle. But when this happens, when you cause these overlapping of these two field structures, um, there's a point where the compression um, causes, in terms of the Vesica Pisces, the union of masculine and feminine energies, these two opposing magnetic vectors, um, which uh, they, they um, it's the idea of there's nine parts to the whole, so the nine represents the whole, and all the other parts are components to the whole, even though nine is a fundamental component to the whole. So it's a little hard to wrap your mind around. It's a component, but the whole at the same time. And uh, that being, um, the nine represents a uh, electrical particle.
and the nine is a singularity. It's, it's a return to the whole. Um, and it can have two vectors, positive and negative. The question is, what vector is it? Are you approaching the singularity? A white hole you're going in, or coming out, black hole you're going in. So there's always two vectors to a singularity. Um, and why a lot of sequences in vortex math are the sequence plus, we usually say plus zero. So vortex math is actually base 10. It's not base 9. It's base 10. It's 9 plus 0. Because you always have to start and end with the same number. Yet, but there are two different vectors. One coming into that reality and one leaving the reality. Because everything has to manifest. Everything has to come from the infinite. Things aren't just finite. They start with the infinite, become finite, and then return to the infinite. It's a continuous cycle of creation. There's no just finite in existence. It always starts with the infinite because the infinite is infinite. And so, when you have these um, electrical particles appear, which are, which are singularities, um, they have a positive and negative value. Um, well, electric particles, they attract each other. Black holes attract white holes, and they pull themselves together. So it turns what's usually a number circle, or two number circles overlaid. It causes the nu these, these opposing number circles to get pulled in toward each other, causing a, a crimp of the magnetic field, causing a breathing and extraction, which is what creates your your famous uh, torus or donut look geometry from the math. Um, and so, uh, in the simplest sense, the magnetic field is centrifugal force. It's expansion, it's radiant, it's masculine, it's hot. Um, while electricity is an implosive force, it's centripetal. It's, um, it's a, a return to the infinite, um, to source. I would like personally like to thank uh, Jason Fervelli writing a, uh, a piece of information on this, um, which helped change my mindset a little, um, in that I considered a magnetic field just to be a pure twisting of the ether. And that's what it is. It, it's a twisting of potential, where um, it's like everything's rubber bands, and you're just twisting up this rubber band or this metal spring. Um, it's the simplest way to understand potential energy. But at the same time, the twisting process is caused by centrifugal force, which is magnetism. Um, and uh, it's interesting, Jason and I think a lot alike um, on so many levels, and as he stated, and this is the big problem with physics right now, is terminology. How do we describe what's actually going on? Usually we're all seeing the same thing, and I have a feeling maybe you are going to understand what I just explained in this. It's, it's really about simplifying the language and, and making a more concrete terminology in which we can all relate to, because language is, is for communication. We need to learn how to use it properly, otherwise what's the point of it? And the thing is language evolves, it constantly evolves, we gotta evolve with it, you know, evolve with our experiences with it. So, oh, I can also show this is my sign. That was the end of the video. Asheville, one love. I hitchhiked into Asheville yesterday. It was an interesting little experience in that, uh, I got dropped off near Staunton, Virginia. And uh, by a trucker, I drove him 100 miles with him. He is quote for the day, so he didn't stop. And I spent four hours at this truck stop, couldn't get a ride out. And I, I average about 10 minutes, usually. Um, itself is a little harder, and a lot harder, actually. And, and so I camped down my hammock the night, got up in the morning, and I walked on the road, and wasn't even on the road a minute. The same trucker passes me at like a little past six in the morning. And rode with him over 220 miles to near Jonathan City, just outside of Asheville, where I got picked up by a friend. Uh, anyways, I think the universe was just trying to teach me patience. You know, things happen the way things happen, very, very mysteriously. Maybe you're watching this video right now, and it's clicking in your head as this mysterious, inspirational moment in itself, trying to figure out what actually is going on. But something I wanted to add to this is if people didn't realize this, this is big, this is really big, is the idea of a cyclical resonance circuit. Is you have two energies moving around this, okay? And I, I don't even know the exact motion. One's going one way, one's going the other way. So they're going like that, almost, is what these energies are doing. Um, is it's going between an electric state and magnetic state. And this is what you see in light, and how light oscillates between an electric state and a magnetic state. It's still the same component. They're just moving between two different states of matter. Same with same with atoms, same with matter. Everything is light. 
everything's light. All you see around us is light, beautiful light. There's some oh radiant sunlight up there. That's quite some light. Um, and that everything oscillates between magnetic and electric fields. An electron isn't there continuously. Why, why do physicists see an electron come into existence, disappear out of existence, come into existence, disappear out of existence, come into existence, disappear out of existence? It doesn't make any sense. It just bleeps in lines. And it's because it's going between electric state and magnetic state, electric state and magnetic state, back and forth, back and forth. Um, you're just looking at two different perspectives. It's really just about, you know, shifting your perspective and seeing something different of what's actually going on. Um, so, I hope this helps some people connect some dots and uh, see the idea of a, a cyclical resonant circuit. Uh, I talked about this before in other videos. Um, it's usually how we do resonant circuits, is we go between um, two capacitive walls, one being, say, positively charged and negatively charged, and have an inductor, which creates the magnetic field. And you oscillate back and forth between electric and magnetic fields, but it's a linear. It's a linear set. If you take that set and turn it, cut, turn, uh, create a loopback effect, um, where you have four points, which relate to the four corners, two magnetic points and two electric points, and you oscillate between these states, um, you get to preserve inertia. And the preservation of inertia is where massive amounts of energy can be utilized. Um, if you just keep tapping a bell, it will keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger in terms of sound. You just need to feed it a little push. How do you preserve the pushing motion to build up the inertia? It's a big secret in terms of energy. And um, it's easier than most people think. Um, cycles, circles, spirals. It's one way to do it. But uh, I hope this uh, creates some mental clarity for some people. And uh, hopefully there will, there will be more to come. There will be lovely, more dynamic things to come. I'm going to keep teaching. I'm getting the, the building process in my life. I'm trying to situate who my family is and want to discover my family. There's definitely some family in my life right now. But um, there's light workers coming together. Been around for a while, a long time. This time we're going to do something pretty badass. So. Namaste, everyone. You have a good one. Enjoy this uh, lovely summer that's before us.